All right, Mopar people. Welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Today I'm gonna to try to go over three common head gasket mistakes that a lot of Mopar engine builders make that also affect all brands. So let me bring y'all along. I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Number one, a lot of people have too much concern with compression and building compression. And a lot of times they sacrifice a good seal for a little bit more compression. So here's what I mean by that. So here's my 400 block. It has been true decked on Ed's Comec machine. So if you look really closely, you can see, hopefully, some of the fine lines. There's a little bit of overspray there I need to wipe off, but the super, super fine lines of, you can hear it. Uh, when that machine's cutter was cutting, so it, he did put the dial pins back in for me. But one re major reason we did that, it had deviation from front to rear, side to side and all that. But the straightness across, and I saw Ed and Wayne actually lay their machinist edge, uh, straight edge across here, and took a six thousandths feeler gauge and could slide right under there without ever touching it. And I know six thousandths isn't a lot, but in a gasket, here's an example, this head gasket, when compressed, I believe is 38 or 39 thousandths. So, uh, you know, you're roughly, what is that, one eighth of that thickness whenever the gasket goes on. So it's quite possible the gasket itself would make up for that and be fine if you had six thousandths over here. But that fire ring needs to seal really, really well. Luckily, there's no water out to this point, but there could be there. So just keeping that in mind, it could cause a little leak out the back or something that you've never seen before, or you wouldn't see until you put the engine together. So uh, that would kind of be my number one, getting both services as flat as you can, minimally getting the head done. So I want to show you this. This is an old 915 that I keep around, and it's definitely rebuildable. Um, but I want you to look at a little bit of pitting and stuff here. So this head has not been shaved or uh, cut at all. And that little bit of pitting and stuff, if it was over into this area or around, say around that water jacket, um, you know, a lot of that, it could end up leaking one way or another. If it had a lot of pitting between cylinders, it could leak there. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. So having a nice seal is actually more important than that little bit of compression that you would be adding. For example, putting a steel shim head gasket on here. I believe they are, you can go thinness of about 19 thousandths, 18 thousandths. So imagine six thousandths uh, over 18, that's one third of that head gasket's thickness. So that could cause for a leak uh, in a situation like this, this being an old seasoned block as they'd say. Uh, let's move on to number two. So number two would just be that assumptions kill your build. And assuming that you can just grab a gasket right out of a kit like that, uh, walk over, stick it on your engine and use it, is kind of a bad deal. And here's why. So a lot of these, this is a 400 block. I've got a 440 block over there. From the factory, they came with a very severe chamfer right here at the top of the cylinders. So I want to show it to you. And I found this lesson out the hard way uh, when I was about 18 or 19 uh, running, I don't know if you see it or not, see my old orange Cuda there. Um, we just built a 440 for it and I used the head gaskets out of the, straight out of the kit, identical to this, bolted it on, uh, car would start and run great. I took it out on the racetrack and it would spit and sputter and, and just really act up. And I thought it was a carburetor so we yanked the carburetor off and I put a brand new carburetor on. I tried a carburetor from somebody else's car. It just kept doing it. And it come to find out whenever this head gasket was uh, flattened, the fire ring actually just barely hung over the edge of that. You can kind of see how close it is there. So when it hung over the edge and it would start making a, um, a, at higher RPMs rather, it would blow that head gasket or actually probably blow it through here to get a little bit of water in. So when it was blowing that head gasket, uh, the car ran like crap. I thought something was wrong with the engine, you know, or my carburetor. So I went back and forth over and over again. It was to check 
as much as possible. And I wanna show you here how large that chamfer is from side to side. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Checking it in several different places. So right there is the very bare minimum, 4.440. If we go over here, see it could it could vary slightly because Ed actually recentered the cylinders. So when he did that, he brought this one in three or four thousandths this way, and this one six thousandths that way, and three thousandths this way, et cetera. So they're all centered in relation to the crankshaft now. So that big chamfer could slightly be more one side or the other. So measuring that, and then you want to give yourself a little bit of leeway, which if it was an extra 20,000, say, that would only be 10,000 on side to side. You don't want a very large gasket that's going to hang over both sides because that can give you other problems as well. Example, like right here. Well, this is a, a Fell Pro gasket that they recommend for this, but that's lost compression right there. So a lot of these cheaper style gaskets, they have those big indentions in them. I'm not really sure why. Somebody out there may know and you can put in the comments, but cheaping out on this head gasket would be a big no-no. Something else to add on whether or not the assumptions will kill your build here. Um, you gotta ask yourself, do you have more compression than this gasket is designed for? I want to say I read somewhere the old blue gaskets like this are only nine and a half to one, maybe 10 to one. If you're running, uh, you know, like a, a very high domed piston and you're 12 to one or something, running this gasket is a bad idea. It's not made to hold that much compression. The other things, um, are the gaskets nitrous or boost rated? So, Example, if I'm running this head gasket on this engine and I put a 200 shot of nitrous, it's quite possible that the gasket itself would fail. Part of that could be from the clamping force of the bolts, which this has 17, that's really nice, having five surrounding every cylinder there. But um, the gasket itself may not be made and designed for that much nitrous. So that could cause an issue. You kind of need to plant it into your build. Number three is to coat or not to coat your gaskets. So I know a lot of people out there, no matter what kind of gasket it is, they grab their can of copper coat, they shake it up 20 times, and they coat that sucker both sides, left and right, everywhere. In the directions and instructions, it says not to do this style gasket. It has these fire rings. It is not designed to be copper coated. So I'm not actually sure what happens to the copper coat that's on there. Maybe it burns off, maybe it goes away, or maybe it leaks. But this is really kind of a smooth surface on that gasket. It may just end up rubbing off at some point or blowing through. Here's a Cometic gasket for a small block Mopar. Um, its thickness, it is an MLS, multi-layer steel. And its total thickness um, compressed is 27 thousandths. So there are a lot of guys out there that I know and talked to recently, they copper coat these front and back, both sides. And I won't mention the name, but if I told you who it was, you would uh, be just fine with it and you would believe it. So I would say go by the manufacturer's directions for that gasket. I'm not sure if it actually says on here, there's a part number. These gaskets uh, do actually require a very smooth surface finish. So I talked about that a while back. That's why I have a pair of these left around. They recommend a gasket made in service of 50 RA or finer. So you're, in, you're also supposed to inspect for your pot rivet clearance. And it says no sealants required. Dry installation. So that's what they recommend. But there's a lot of guys out there who race and have raced a long time. And they copper coat. So, again, use your best judgment on that. That would be my number three. Something else you may want to think about could be a bonus that we discuss here. Using a steel shim uncoated head gasket on a factory block, cast iron block, and an aluminum head. That could cause some kind of electrolysis. I don't personally know. I don't have enough experience to see that happening. I don't know how long it will happen. 
the properties of metal are that if you put dissimilar metals together, eventually they will corrode, especially when you add straight water to it. So if this was a race engine that did not have any additives in it and went in this race car, then it's more likely to corrode faster. I don't think it would cause a big deal short time frame, but overall, I think it would, it's going to corrode at some point. So y'all do your own research on that. I just wanted to bring it up while I'm talking about head gaskets. Hopefully this helps somebody out there and I appreciate y'all watching.